All right, before we get started, and if you're using your own rig, I wanted to show you the key parts of this rig in order to make this run cycle work if you want to make it look similar to mine. As some of you may know, my biggest passion in life is helping and teaching others everything I know about animation while learning to become a better animator myself. YouTube is a great way to share that passion, but I don't get the opportunity to create videos for you as often as I would like. So if you'd like to support this channel to help me do more of what I love, please consider checking out my website where you can download the character we will be using for this tutorial. Thank you so much for your support and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. So here, as you can see, I have this boy character. I also have the template and everything off to the side, which I'll talk about shortly. Uh, but as far as the rig itself, it's it's pretty simple. There's really not much to it. There are some bones that are hidden currently that control the face. But as you can see here, just right off the bat, you probably notice the eye, it looks a little wonky. Uh, just know that this is kind of typical for, for Moho. I'm using Moho 12.5, but if you render this out, it should show up uh, totally fine. Again, he looks a little bug-eyed, looks a little weird, um, but as we get this run cycle going, you'll see how it how the end result will look. So starting off, I have a head turn here, nothing too fancy. Uh, you can do whatever you want for your head turn really, but this is just kind of what I have. And then I have a body turn. So as he's running, it actually looks like he's turning uh, with his body there. And then I have some target bones here in the feet. And as you can see there, uh, they, they will break uh, usually on frame zero, but on frame one and above, once you start animating, uh, that issue tends to go away. But also with these target bones, let me go to frame one here. Um, I made sure that they are completely movable. So I made sure that I can translate uh, the top of these legs here with the, the target bones uh, still working with everything. Uh, that's really important when you're doing this run cycle and you're bringing the hips uh, frontwards and backwards. Uh, it, it really helps to sell that run there. Next, I'm gonna be using this run template that you can see here on my screen. Uh, this is downloadable with the character from my website, and this is going to be our reference. And uh, references are really, actually really important as a, for an animator to understand uh, timing, spacing, and posing. Usually looking at real life references or looking at references from other animations that professional animators have created. Uh, this is a really great way to understand how things are working. In fact, I encourage you to use references as much as you can when animating. This particular animation I probably learned from hundreds of references over the years to where I felt com comfortable enough and confident enough to create my own. So this little run cycle that you see here uh, on this template, if I go ahead and I just pop over here, uh, you can see this template is gonna be highlighted in blue if you have your own file and the, the rig is gonna be in green. Uh, but if I come over here to the folder here, you can see that I have it set up so that as you're going from frame to frame to frame, it's just quickly updating uh, what the what the reference is showing there. And that'll make it really easy as you have things side by side to set up your run. Uh, that's pretty much why I have it set up that way. All right, so another thing that I do that makes it a little bit easier for the whole workflow is not too many people know about this, but down here you have your little splitting uh, tabs that are, are really helpful to split your view. And so I'm just gonna click on this one right here to split my view. And here I can have my reference, I can move my window around. I really don't need that much space for this guy. So I'm just gonna move it to right about there. And then I have my window here for my rig. I also have the ground, uh, the ground just kind of template, I guess. So if you wanna bring that in, uh, that's gonna be really handy to know where to put your feet. And again, if, if you wanted to, uh, this isn't necessary, but you can line these up too, just so you can see like the same height. Uh, but I'm gonna be eyeballing this myself and uh, I've done this run cycle a few times now, so I know pretty much what it is that I want to do. All right, so once you have your run template ready to go and you have your screen split, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change our keyframe interpolation, the default. And we're gonna change it from its default of smooth to step, and as we start animating, I'll be able to explain a little bit more what that is doing. But basically, it's gonna help us to prevent animating our character um, and having any sort of uh, in-betweens or any sort of tweening happening uh, between these poses. It's, it's kind of like as if you're drawing this on paper. It's just one piece of paper has a drawing, the next piece of paper has a drawing, and there's no animation happening between those sheets. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight our boy character here. So make sure that you have your rig highlighted because now we're gonna start animating. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control F. Now what Control F does is it freezes all the bones that are visible on screen here. And there's, uh, as, as you can see here on the left hand side, there's our channel for bone angle, for translation, and for bone scale. And when I freeze that, it creates a keyframe for all of those, uh, for all of those bones um, using these channels. But if I don't do that, let's say for instance, I have an arm moving on frame one, and then it moves to another position on frame 24, but I didn't create any keyframes in between that, it's slowly, slowly, slowly going to change to that new position over those 24 frames. And that's why you get that floating effect a lot of time. So just keep that in mind, keyboard shortcut control F, we're going to be using that a lot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create our key position. And I'm going to assume at this point that you know how to navigate. So I'm going to be using keyboard shortcuts, you'll see here popping up on my screen. Uh, but you should be pretty familiar with what I'm saying as I'm calling out the tools. So with the manipulate bones tool, I'm going to take this root bone. And what the root bone is, is it is the parent of all of these bones. So as you can see here, when I pick up the character, he moves and so does all the bones. So picking up that character, I'm going to be holding down shift. And now this is really important. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to move them up. And the reason why I'm holding down shift is it's going to constrain either left to right in a straight line or up and down. And whenever you're moving your character inside of a run cycle up and down, it's really important that he's constrained uh, vertically and that he's not moving backwards and forwards or else you're going to get a lot of popping. So holding down shift, I'm going to pick this character up to right about there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this target bone and I'm going to bring up his legs so that it's roughly around the same shape as you can see there in that, in that silhouette. So I'm going to bring it to right about there, that leg there, and then I'm going to pull this one to right about here. Now I don't need to do any hip shifting because uh, of how this is originally rigged. This is in a pretty good spot. Again, making sure that the bones are frozen, control F. Next, I'm going to do the same thing for his up upper torso. I'm just going to bring his arm here up front, and I'm going to bring this towards the back. Now, because the arms and legs are going to be opposite of one another inside of run cycle, uh, you can see it looks a little off. So now if I add this body turn, you can see now his, his shoulders are going to be rotating in the direction that his arms are going. And that's basically what we want is we want his, his body to be facing the complete opposite direction than his legs at this moment. His head and everything else, I don't really want you to worry about. The only thing that we're going to do is we're just going to move his body forward just a little bit more. So again, just like your template you have there, that's what they're for. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's move on to the next extreme position. So this run cycle is gonna be a total of 17 frames and then it's going to loop back. Uh, it's a pretty fast run cycle, about eight frames per step. So what I'm gonna do is because this is a run cycle and I'm on frame 17, let me zoom in here on my timeline with the, uh, the little icons right here. I'm gonna hit Control F. Again, we're freezing the pose. So from this pose to this pose, as you can see there, nothing is happening. Um, but also because it's on step, it's it's not going to be doing like any in-betweens. So now I'm going to go to the frame in between the two poses, and that's on frame 9. And again, I'm going to hit Control F to create my freeze bone. But now what you can see here is the silhouette has changed, and that's because his body positioning is going to be changing. It's basically going to be the same that it was before, except opposite. His legs and his arms will be opposite of where it was prior. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn his body turn all the way over to the other side. And I'm going to position his arms just like you can see there uh, using that little silhouette template that I created. And again, his legs are now going to be opposite. And we got a little bit of distortion there. I'm just going to move that back. Okay. Now, as you can see here, it's a little wonky. And that is because his hips are so far back. So let's go ahead and let's bring his hips forward. So I'm going to select the bone, hold B, hit C on the keyboard to transform it. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm just going to move it forward uh, for now. And we'll just try to get that leg in a better spot there. And that looks pretty good. I might have moved his leg a little bit too far forward, but uh, we'll see. It's a lot of trial and error with uh, animation and these poses are, are really important. So it's important that we do get these poses in a pretty good spot here. And I think for the most part, that looks pretty good. So what I can do to go from one keyframe to the other, you hold down Alt. Uh, but if I don't hold down Alt and I just use my arrows, you can see it just goes one by one. And these little things are my keyboard shortcut. This is just to help you see. So uh, sorry if this gets a little intense with stuff all over the screen. 
Um, but I'm gonna hold down Alt and I'm gonna hit back the other direction there. So now I'm just gonna switch between Alt on both sides there. And I think that looks pretty good because basically you wanna keep your pose pretty similar to what you have for the other side or else again, because it's a run cycle and because this is a really fast one, there's gonna be a lot of popping. Another thing that you can do to kind of see to make sure that things are similar if you don't have a template is turn on your onion skin and you can go to the frame that you're basically mimicking. Uh, however, just keep in mind that, oh, here's a good spot. So for example, his foot right here, I can move that out just a little bit more. Uh, but just keep in mind that you're not going to line these up exactly uh, simply because now we're on other legs and the other the other side of the legs and the uh, when he's just standing there normally because of the perspective that he's in, uh, not everything is going to match up exact. One thing to look for that can be helpful if you are using uh, a reference of some sort, and the reason why I created this as a silhouette is you can look at the negative space between his arms and between the shirt and things like that. To, to see how things are set up. And for the most part, that looks pretty good. There's a little bit extra right here, uh, but that's because once we get into this a little bit further, this body is not gonna be quite in the same position that we have it right now. Uh, but for right now, just starting out, just creating our poses and our positioning, it works. So for the most part, this, this looks pretty good. I would say the only one other thing is I would just have his head rotated up just a little bit uh, for these poses. And again, because this is a rotation, and I'm just gonna keep all the, the head rotations the same right now. I can just simply copy the, the head rotation I put on frame one. And when I say rotation, just putting his head up, nothing with the head turned. Uh, but go to frame one, select my selected bone angle, has this symbol here on the red channel, and I'll hit Control C, Control V, and that'll paste that same pose there. And again, everything on frame one, you could basically go ahead and copy because you want that to be exactly the same for frame 17 so that the loop looks proper. All right, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're gonna key in the rest of these positions so that we can finish up our poses for this run cycle, and I'll see you there. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to upload your results to the Facebook groups. I would love to see your progress. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe.